Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We are setting up my bullet journal for the month of February. <laughs> we kind of got a glimpse at my December setup um, in there. But yeah, so I'm really excited about today's video. I massively changed up both the way that I do spreads and my style for this month. And it felt like a much needed change, kind of lined up with a new lunar year. And yeah, that felt exciting. Because also, technically, this is the first setup that I did this year. Because I really started January 1 last year. So yeah, new year, new spreads. Um, new way of setting up the bullet journal, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. And it's kind of inspired by Notion. And the funny thing about that is that I didn't realize that it was inspired by Notion until I finished it and I looked at it and I went, this looks like, like my Notion setup. And that was funny. It was really interesting to see how something inspired me without me being aware of it. And I only realized it once the whole thing was done. It was like, wait, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, as you can see, a big change from past months. If you've been here for a while, if you haven't, feel free to go look at past uh, monthly setups. You might get some cool ideas on there because I usually try to shake things up. Sorry, English is my first language and sometimes I get kind of stuck. Uh, I usually try to shake things up as far as spreads. So even if the theme isn't something that you particularly enjoy, uh, you can always get some fun ideas for spreads. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, in past months, I usually try to make uh, the name of the month either like the main focus or try to make it a big element on there. And this month I was like, you know what? <laughs> I have a really set idea for the theme that I want and for the sort of aesthetic. And I have no idea of making the name of the month a big thing on there while still preserving the theme that I want to make. So we're just gonna <laughs> do the theme and then I will incorporate the name of the month on there however I can, however small it will get. So it really became just the name of the little paper boat and that's it. And I really love this actually. It makes it really soft and minimal, which is really cute. If you're wondering why I colored in those elements before uh, I colored anything else and then I just skipped to outlining, that's because those colors, um, those markers tend to bleed a little bit with the fine liner. And so I decided to paint those in first uh, because the other colors that I will be using don't really bleed in that much. Uh, also, the fine line that I'm fine liner that I'm using, if you're wondering, is the one from Wonder and Newton. It's the 0.1. I put this in a haul recently, and I talked about them a little bit, and I tested them on camera. If you if you're interested in seeing that, um, but yeah, I discovered this fine liner recently, and I'm in love. With it. I'm in love with these fine liners. Like I don't know the shape of them. It's really ergonomical it's not really ergonomical but i don't know it really matches up with the way that i hold markers and it helps me to make better lines does that make sense it makes sense to me i don't know <laughs> but speaking about fine liners and the way that i've been outlining things uh i also changed up the style for that this is really inspired by lila journals i really love her style and i had been playing around because one thing that i usually like to do is look at other artists or other bullet journalists and look at what they're doing see what resonates with me and see how i can incorporate that in my style and she does this thing where she purposely doesn't do perfect lines and she adds in like little dots little fragments little se uh, separations and the thing with me is um my hands are <laughs> very stable and maybe this is something that i could work on with some practice but i really have a hard time with making lines that are very perfect at least as perfect as i would like them to be and so that's something that i really struggle with because then um i either have to go with making lines kind of look a bit chaotic to make it work i've done that in the past i don't really know how to explain it verbally it uh, yeah, I don't know how to explain it verbally, but kind of making them look a little bit draft-like for them to work um, or having to still try and go with a perfect line that then 
looks very messy because I really do not have um, the steady hand to make it work. So this tile, it looks so pretty. It looks like it's on purpose and it is. And it still looks very cute and on purpose. And yeah, so I'm, I'm experimenting with this. Um, as you can see, I'm going in with a pencil on top of the marker and that's because that's a watercolor pencil. And so what I'm doing is since this um, brush marker from Farber Castle is water activated, not water activated, it's a, it's a water based uh, brush pen. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going with, with the pencil and using that to build the color for the marker and blending it in so that it looks a bit more like water. Also something that I'm doing is I'm using this uniball gel pen to make lines then sponging them over with my finger to build that kind of color effect on the water and on the sky. I didn't want it to be like super flat. I wanted to have some dimension and I feel like with the water this is really perfect and I decided to actually build it up into the sky as well so that it has some more dimension and I'm so in love with the way that this cute illustration turned out. It's so cute. Um, for the water you can see like the pencil uh, addition then blend it in with a marker. It helped to build the color in a way that I would have to <laughs> make a mess of the paper to do. Uh, if you build in um, the markers a bit too much, even if the paper is thick, you will end up bleeding over onto the other side. And this way it was really perfect. It didn't do that at all. So yeah, with the pencil, the pen, sorry, I'm doing that. And I'm doing the same thing with a white uniball gel pen. I did a sort of a draft on a separate notebook where I tried the Sakura uh, gel pens for this and it didn't work because they dry up too fast. This one takes a little bit longer to dry so it's perfect for that um, smudging. Uh, when I tried to smudge the Sakura ones, they didn't smudge at all. They just stayed put and it was a very harsh white line. So yeah, that didn't work. As you can see, I kind of tried to mimic like the moon shape there on the water as if the water was really still and clean and was mm, uh, reflecting the moon. And I'm doing the same thing with the little stars. I thought that that was a really cool touch. And yeah, and adding cute little stars here and there. And I'm going over and adding some stars as well with a silver metallic uniball pen. Uh, which you can see right now, but I will show you in a little bit. Um, it's shiny, so from certain angles, it's really shiny and metallic and gorgeous. And it adds a nice pop of color. So yeah. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I added the bunny really just for the year of the rabbit. Um, the bunny, this is his only um, appearance throughout this theme. Um, because although he's cute, uh, it really wasn't the main focus. My focus for this scene was really the water with the lotus flowers and the sky with the clouds and the moon. So yeah, the bunny, he's really just here for the cover page. Sorry if you enjoyed the bunny. Um, but yeah, and also the boat paper, paper boat. Why I keep, I keep on saying boat paper? <laughs> Um, the paper boat because I honestly just thought it was cute and yeah <laughs> that's that's my basic motivation for most things if it's cute I'll do it um but yeah I'm really happy with how this turned out um it's, it's the first time I'm like really really happy with a cover page as far as like my illustration skills go because most of the times it's like oh I was really creative with this theme or oh this turned out aesthetically but this is like a full-fledged sort of illustration and I hadn't done that ever because I didn't really think that I could do it and I went for it this time yeah do you see the sparkles do you see how shiny it is it's shiny shiny a little bit better it's really reflective of the light and so when the light hits it right it's just oh it's gorgeous I'm really happy about that. And the quote page, I wanted to be very minimal. I didn't want to go overboard um, since the, the cover page is supposed to be the main focus. Here is where the changes start as far as spreads. So, uh, I hardly used my bullet journal for January. And I honestly think that most of that had to do with the theme. I went with a really loud theme, which although it was very vibrant and clean, I ended up really not liking it. 
it was too loud it wasn't clean enough and yeah so I wanted to change that up and I wanted to really isolate the drawing part and then make the, um, the usable part of the bullet journal, if you, if you will, like the, the part that you actually fill in, make it a bit cleaner. This is kind of where the uh, notion comparison starts. There is my little head poking. Hello there. <laughs> um, though I did make huge improvements as far as having my head show up in the frame. I really did. I worked on my setup. It's, it's working well, at least a lot better. But yeah, I was just saying, um, the similarities with Notion is, at least on my Notion, what I do is I used to have like images either on the side or on the top as kind of like separators, like borders, where it's just the little illustration and there's nothing else in the middle. And then I just make the Notion, well, the usable part, very clean and very segmented into what I want. And I kind of mimic that in my bullet journal without being aware of it but that's why like the illustrations are so separate i didn't really want to um bring it up and mix it with the theme with not the theme with the setup i usually do that in past months i'll have like little elements still like in um say i have the calendar and i'll have like a little um little flower for example by the corner of the calendar or you know like little elements really wanted to skip that for this month worked out really beautifully i'm sorry that the journal isn't perfectly in frame to be honest i didn't realize this until too late because at this point i was literally lying down <laughs> on the floor filming and the phone i'm filming with my phone it was a bit high above me and i didn't notice and i was like wait this is not okay there you go i realized it sorry <laughs> Uh, again, doing the same thing with the pencil. I did this, the same technique, I did it throughout the whole um, bullet journal. And yeah, also another thing that I changed as far as the setup, um, I realized that a big calendar, I didn't use it. I did it every single month. I made a big calendar, which never went anywhere. I never used it. I only filled in like my work schedule, my days off, and maybe an appointment here and there, and that was it. I didn't schedule anything else on there. I didn't write anything else on there. So I had this massive calendar that wasn't used at all. And I, I thought about using that system of calendars that a lot of people use, where they literally just have a list um, for the days of the month. I figured out that that really wouldn't work for me. I'm a very visual person and I need to have that layout of a calendar, but I figured if the big calendar doesn't work, let's just make a smaller calendar, take up less space and fill up the space with something different. So I really changed up a lot of this <laughs> to experiment and see how this goes. So I have the calendar there, which only takes up half of a page. Also, if you haven't been here before, I use a B5 notebook, not an A5 like most people. Uh, an A5 is smaller than a B5. So let's say that a B5 is somewhere in between an A5 journal and an A4, I guess. Yeah, that's the best way I have of, comparison, of comparing this. Also, this is a notebook therapy journal. There's my face again. Hello. Um, but yeah, calendar, as you can see, it's half a page if not less. Uh, and then on the bottom of that, I just have things to get done this month. And I find that writing it down, things to get done, somehow makes me a lot more motivated <laughs> to do them rather than just writing to-do list. Because like, I don't know, to-do is a bit more arbitrary in the sense that I I have to do them, sure, but it, I also won't die if I don't. Well, things to get done is like this neat. It's probably a stupid difference for most of you it works for me i don't know why um but yeah then on the side i have a sleep log which i made a lot smaller i kind of made it in this bit of a format of a habit tracker not a sleep log as i've been doing it in the past months because i've actually started using an app to track my sleep which is called sleep cycle in case anyone would like to use it and i already have that uh, visual side on there so i don't need it twice so I really just need to track sleep log as sort of habits and since that 
did I go to bed before this time? Did I get off of bed prior to this time? And did I sleep a minimum of seven hours? Those are the main things that I want to track. Um, small mood tracker, space for highlights, and a workout tracker with a little section to write down health concerns that I might have. And that's it. I'm not having a habit tracker this month. I'm experimenting with that because honestly, my main concern this month and my main focus as far as habits go is my sleep. I've been really slacking off on my sleep and I've been putting other habits in front of my sleep, which is stupid because sleep is basically the foundation of all of your energy as far as food and, and food as well. So it's like sleep really needs to be my priority this month and sleep is going to be my priority this month. And if it means that I'm not gonna be as productive this month and I'm not gonna be building a, a ton of habits, so be it. Sleep is my focus. So yeah, <laughs> that's why there's no sleep track. No, God, no habit tracker. Um, yeah, for this one, I made a, a bigger banner and I kind of ditched the lotuses for this page. There's my face really in there, God. Um, yeah, this one only has the clouds and I don't know. I, I, I realize now that this kind of lines up with sleep being a priority for me this month, which I didn't realize it wasn't on purpose. I just like the kind of aesthetic of the little clouds and the peacefulness of them. Yeah, it's funny how, <laughs> like the notion inspired thing, it's funny how things will inspire you without you being consciously aware of things. But yeah, explaining this page, this is basically a weekly master log in the sense that i have all of the weeks here i will not have a weekly log separate for each week that doesn't work for me either and also one thing that i used to do with that and that i feel like most people do is i will set up like the first weekly on camera and then i'll set up the rest as uh, whenever i need them it doesn't work for me because i end up either not setting them up or setting them up too late and then I don't have, have the patience to make it all pretty again so I make it really basic and if it's not pretty I do not use it um, so what I figured out was well first of all the way that I was doing the weekly to start wasn't working so let's ditch that let's change it up let's set up the whole thing in one go so that I don't have that issue and I can just use it uh, I realized that I didn't need as much space as well same thing with the calendar I end up not writing that much on it um, I really want a space where I can write down any appointments that I might have and anything that I might need to um, let's say add bigger notes for myself that don't fit in the calendar like if I need to really explain something that I'm going to be doing that day or if I want to write big to-dos that I need to get done that day. So it's not gonna be a huge to-do list for each day. I'm not gonna write everything that I need to get done. I'll just write the main priorities and those are the ones that really need to get done, uh, whatever comes. So yeah, those are the big uh, concerns for the day that will be put on here and appointments and such, like basically the things that I cannot get away from. And for any additional things that I want to get done, I will just either track those on my phone or in a separate notebook. Uh, if you're wondering why this is already outlined, yeah. Um, what I did accidentally was I started <laughs> doing this for some reason after I did the cover. Like, I don't know. I don't know what happened to me if I was sleepy or what. I started setting this up after I did the cover, not realizing that this was the last page spread of the month. And I was like, wait, what did I just do? And I realized what I had done. <laughs> and I went back to the, the monthly um, spread. And then I also accidentally deleted the footage of me doing the outline of this. So yeah, guys, bear with me. <laughs> I really do not know what happened to me. I do not know. But yeah, I, I, I did the outline first. I hope that you'll be okay with that. It's not like it's a major event that wasn't recorded. Yeah. Uh, here on the side, this is a productivity log, uh, making it very minimal. But yeah, I switched it up, made the um, little cute drawing thing on the side, like I do with my notion. Um, because I, I do switch up on my notion as far as like 
side illustrations and like bottom or top illustrations. Um, I like that dimension, so I wanted to bring that onto here as well. And also give you guys some ideas if you don't really like the idea of finishing or ending the page with an illustration, you'd rather have that as a continuous thing throughout the whole page. Um, there you go. Here's an idea for you. Uh, since it's a B5 notebook, I have enough space where I can make this um, thick enough so that it's, you know, I can add in detail and it's still like flashy in a sense, but I still have enough page to actually write things down and make it practical. So it doesn't take up the entire thing and leaves me with like five dots <laughs> to make my, my spread, you know? So going in with the same technique uh, as I did for the um, cover. One thing, um, when you're adding the washies to make those really clean lines, one thing that I'll suggest is uh, if the washi is a bit strong, mine were, and I have that little problem with the previous page if you noticed, where the washi kind of tore a little bit of the paper, uh, glue it to your hand a little bit just so you can get most of the glue out and then put it on the page just so that it doesn't really hold onto the paper and uh, pull it back when you take off the washi. Here's my productivity log. As you can see, I have a little uh, calendar. I did this for my last month's uh, productivity log, but one thing that I added was a resting option so that I will have a resting day. That way, if I'm really taking a day to just rest and relax, I have that option and I added a journaling page. And here is the final flip through. There we go. I'm so happy with this, generally. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I feel like it's super usable, super practical, super to the point. Not like for aesthetic purposes only. It's really practical and usable and I'm really happy and excited to get into it. And so yeah guys, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I love you, thank you. Consider subscribing and commenting and bye, thank you.